Thank you very much, Ronan, for this presentation, and a special thanks to Hein for this invitation and for the, uh, the greater organization of this workshop. So in the time at my disposal, I will try to retrace part of the history of an ego document uh, from late 18th century Italy, the memoir of Isaac Vita Serzi from Pitigliano, a small town in the southern part, the southern border of the Grand Duchy of Tuscany with the Papal States. And uh, we are in central Italy, and uh, so the Grand Duchy of Tuscany. I will present the text of this memoir, its author, and its particular context of production, as well as the long tradition from which it stems. And then I will propose um, to associate uh, this eco document to Jewish self-representation tradition and to Italian Jewish ritual tradition. My intention will be to highlight in particular the constant intertwining between the individual and the collective experience in Jewish history and writing, in Jewish memory and writing, as well as the constant interest Italian Jews uh, had in relating general history as much as in dealing with the general culture and power dynamics writing in Hebrew and in Italian. And let me first present a short overview um, of the Italian Jewish um, memoir writing from the early modern to the Enlightenment and the revolutionary periods. I should mention a number of outstanding uh, examples. Uh, Jewish Italian legal documents include uh, the Hebrew memoir that you saw here by the well known rabbi and physician David de Pomis, David Minatapuchin, from Spoleto in central Italy, uh, who enclosed his memoir in the introduction to the Hebrew dictionary that you saw here, uh, entitled Semach David. Uh, Dictionario Novo Ebraico, uh, published in 1587 or 1888 in Venice. Uh, this was a three language uh, dictionary, the first one to be conceived, a Hebrew, Latin, Italian vernacular dictionary. In the very first pages of this book, um, David de Pomis recounted the history of his sufferings and peregrinations across the Tuscan Roman border uh, after his expulsion from the Papal States uh, as a result of the, of the anti-Jewish rulings by Pope Paul IV in 1555. I shall mention another example, uh, the Hebrew autobiography entitled Chaye Yehuda, written the first half of the 17th century by the prominent Venetian rabbi Yehuda uh, Ari uh, Modena, best known as Leon Modena. This was one of the first Jewish autobiographies in the early modern period. Uh, painted a vivid picture of uh, life, of the life of a rabbi and renowned intellectual in the Venetian ghetto, with his joys, his griefs, and so on. But differently from the memoir by David de Pomis, uh, here the text was uh, meant to be kept in the family and to be read by modern students and not for publishing. Just another example, um, the Sefera Galut Verpedut by Abraham Massarani, published in Venice in 1634, uh, that, is, that was a detailed uh, account, uh, memoir, recounting the political and military history of the town of Mantua and its Jewish community between the years 1627 and 1631, a time span uh, during which the town of Mantua uh, suffered a military siege and Jews were first exposed and then readmitted into town. And a further example, I shall recall the Hebrew autobiography entitled Midbar Puchot by Itzhak Mina Levim, uh, relating Jewish life uh, in the ghetto of Venice around the second half of the 17th century, as well as the 18th century diary um, 
Untitled Magal Tov, uh, written by the most celebrated Sephardic rabbi of Livorno, uh, Yosef Chaim David Azulai, best known as the Chida. Uh, reporting his journeys uh, around Italy as a Shaddar. And for what concerns the revolutionary times, that is my suggestion, we shall recall the Hebrew memoirs uh, written by the rabbi Yaakov Moshe Cohen from Senegalia, in central Italy, in Papa States, uh, included in his Sefer Emek Kabacha and in Sefer Maase Anisim, reporting the tragedy of anti-Jewish violence uh, in Ancona and Senegalia through personal memory and through collection of testimonies from witnesses. And moreover, a different type of short memoirs or autobiographical records can be found in Jewish prayer books and of course in private uh, archives as Chaim recalled this morning. These are usually short reports about family events, births, deaths, and memorial accounts in the form of Hebrew poetry relating to survival of a family, of a community from dangers. And references are given to anti-Jewish violence, of course, uh, but also to natural disasters as, as, such as earthquakes, plagues, fires, etc. And this kind of records portray the historical experience of, in a strictly local perspective and are deeply related to special rituals established in the family or in the community. And you have two small examples from uh, Senegalia and Ferrara. I shall thus dedicate the rest of my time to present a very interesting uh, example of a Jewish memoir. Uh, from, uh, from Petigliano and belonging to this last category of eager documents found in family archives. And the manuscript source um, is actually kept in a private collection and up to this day I haven't uh, been able to, to examine the original. Thus, my presentation will be based on later editions of the manuscript, uh, the one published in, 1860, in the 1860s by Flaminio Servi, who was a nephew of the, author, of the author, and the one published in the 1930s by uh, the renowned historian Cecil Roth. To, uh, the memoir uh, bears an Italian title, uh, Perpetua Memoria in Bene, it's very difficult to translate. I shall translate it as perpetual memory for a happy resolution. Mm. Mm? Let's say. Um, a signature is found at the end of the document, IVS, the initial letters of the author, Isacche Vita Servi. Isacche is the Judeo Italian for Itzhak. Um, Isacche was a prominent member of the Servi family, one of the most influential families in the ghetto of Pitigliano. His main occupation was uh, trading in uh, textiles in society with other Jews, and besides he served as a, co a Jewish community chief uh, all around the late 18th century. Uh, according to a deposition he gave at court of Pitigliano in 1800, he was 37 years old, he was married, he had children, and managed a shop of textiles situated along the street adjacent to the ghetto. In fact, since the 1620s, local Jews, Pitigliano Jews, had been forced to live in a restricted area, a ghetto, and still they had been granted some privileges as well as special permissions to run rural business, to own real estate, and open shops outside the ghetto area. So the main occupation for Jewish merchants in Pitigliano was actually trading in textiles and agri-products across the borderline with the Papal States. 
in late 18th century, we are talking about a Jewish community uh, of nearly 250,300 members, represented about the 8-9% of the total population of Petilian. So, uh, Isaac produced his memoir in late 1799 or early 1800 in a period that historians uh, refer to as the counter-revolutionary period. This was the phase of Christian religious motivated uprisings, uh, violent attacks, uh, popular trials against the so-called Jacobins. And Italian Jews, of course, were accused en masse to be, uh, to, uh, to be Jacobins, that is to say to have displayed sympathies for the French and the Republican regime. As a result, these uprisings, also known uh, as the Viva Maria mobs, were the theater of very stark anti-Jewish violence and killing. And as we will see, Isaac Evita Servi focused his memoir precisely on reporting the violence, on reporting the violent attacks suffered by his family and other members of his community. Through his memoir, he wished not only to record personal grief, but also to celebrate collective survival and deliverance from danger, and moreover to testify to the help his family and community received from a part of the Christian population. One few uh, notes about this text, and I will post some, some excerpts from the, from the manuscript. So the manuscript source is written in, in Italian and with some Hebrew insertion, insertion and this is according to a style and a model uh, commonly used by Italian Jews in the, in the 18th century. And we might take into consideration that uh, the fact that Italian Jews in the 1790s were regarded as particularly integrated uh, minority within the Italian society while being able to maintain a strong attachment to tradition, to, to, to Jewish tradition. And uh, in general, uh, European Jews regarded the, uh, their Italian brethren as a model, sort of a balance uh, between progressive culture and religious orthodoxy. So accordingly, in this text that I'm going to present here, language of cultural, religious, uh, belonging and language of the country of dwelling are combined together uh, in what could be described as, um, as an ordinary bilingualism in, in Jewish Italy. Uh, I will read some excerpts in, in an English translation and you will be able to follow the original text uh, through, through the PowerPoint. During the night of the 16th of June, 1799, a popular revolution occurred in this land of Pitigliano. After the Republican tree was knocked down, we, Yehudim, received a manifest miracle from the Most High, Akedosh Baruch Hu, as all the populace, after cutting the tree, came to the get, get to make a tragic end of us all, the poor Yehudim. But thanks to the assistance of the Kadosh Baruch Hu, they did not succeed in stabbing to death anybody except the unfortunate Abramo Camerino, who fell victim to their fury and yet had time to reconcile with the blessed God as he survived a few days after the stabbing. In the same night, 18 Yehudim were imprisoned and many Arhelim Christians entered my house and pillaged everything <coughs> and broke all the furniture into pieces. But thanks to the Kadosh Baruch Hu, we were not hurt because we ran away from the house in time. And only my respected father didn't want to leave his room. 
and was taken to the prison without his clothes on. And that Kadosh Baruch Hu gave him courage and nothing was lost. And my house was damaged for about 500 scuds, scudi. And I said, Hashem Natan, Hashem Lakach, The next day, we tried all the appropriate means to get the poor prisoners out of jail, which was not possible. On the contrary, many times the populace tried to get the keys from the jailer and go and kill those who were in prison. Our anxiety was unspeakable when Akedosh Baruch Hu showed us his compassion and after five days we saw four, uh, eight soldiers from Arezzo coming with our captain Giuseppe Romanelli who at that point appeared to our Keila as many Malachim and we had everyone released before Shabbat Kodesh and we celebrated all the Shabbat Kodesh in happiness and serenity. Uh, on Sunday, we had once more a great fear because a rumor was suddenly spread. Yeah. Uh, was suddenly spread that during the night they wanted to plunder the, get, the ghetto, but Akadosh Baruch Hu sees the, the visions, and during the night, all the best men of the town stayed in our defense. And thanks to our God, be blessed. Nothing followed, but we continue, nevertheless, our usual. And this made us see another manifest miracle that occurred in the following Sunday. In the morning, at three hours before noon, nine dragoons come, came on horseback with their commander, and they pretended to be troops from Arezzo, but they were from Orvieto. And they toured the town and received accommodation in the house of local captain, Caetano Luciani. An hour after their arrival, a message was delivered to the get, ghetto, saying that our respect, Chacham, the rabbi, had to show that to that commander because this letter had orders to give him. So immediately, our respected Chacham showed up with Abraham Ben Porad, one of the temporary Parnassim, to hear such orders, and that commander told them with a superior air that he had received orders from the deputation of Arezzo to plunder a set fire to our get, but that he was a benevolent person and did not want to do it, that he required instead four horsemen attires to be made at our expense, and he also wanted a piece of gold stripe to decorate his caparison, and immediately it was replied that he, they would do what they could to make it accomplished and they left and came back to the ghetto to give the news. A short congress was then held between us, Yehudim, and it was decided to give the, these horsemen the tires, and Mr. Angelo Sadun was sent to his shop to prepare the stuff. I, I made a cut, this is a longer report. And in the meanwhile, several young Aralim Christians came forward and asked Mr. Sadun if they, the soldiers, would pay for all that stuff. And, they, and he said no. So they told him not to give anything because they were murderers, as it actually <coughs> was discovered. And in the coming night, they wanted to plunder the ghetto and make a massacre of all the poor Yudim. Immediately, the whole town got in arms and as a result, four of them soldiers were killed. Three were imprisoned. Their commander with the secretary were arrested and finally brought in chains to Arezzo for judgment. IBS, Isaac Vita Sergi. So, we are confronted here with a um, vibrant document uh, about the 799 counter-revolutionary uh, mobs in Tuscany, and the personal memoir by Isaac Vita Servi offers substantial information about a series of uh, paradoxical anti-Jewish attacks perpetrated by local Christians, pop, uh, local Christian populace, and some foreign rowdy militias from the neighboring town of Orvieto. 
This text includes the description of a counter-revolutionary scene uh, that involves a series of shifting events, proceeding from violence to deliverance, from pillage to protection, from requisition to restitution, some of them being starkly anti-Jewish and others being partly the expression of an unexpected Christian solidarity toward Jews. So contrast, uh, paradoxes, surprise and wonder play an important role in the account. The author uses uh, the first person, singular, but switches most often to the first person, plural. He actually talks in the name of himself, of his family, and of his community. Three levels of self-representation are used uh, from the most personal I, I to the most collective we. In fact, um, if the document was for a family restricted circulation, um, the account itself is not limited to the intimate uh, sphere of the family, uh, but purposely includes a much broader uh, dimension. This memory uh, does include reference to the family house being built, to the father of the author, Abraham Serpi, who was aged 70, who experienced popular hatred in jail, but it also displays descriptions of social and religious activities within the broader Jewish community. We can attain evidence of the political hierarchies within the, broad, uh, within the community, um, between rabbis and parnasim, as well as evidence of the internal organization of the community, whose decisions were taken by a congress, a lot uh, of elected chiefs and representatives. And moreover, we find evidence of the Pitiliano community rituality, uh, namely the institutional special fasting days, uh, services of penitential pray prayers and gatherings for social assistance uh, as responses to fear and stress. And collectivity is here depicted as a protective shield and as a force establishing a communication with God, a God who listens to his people and intervenes in its defense by moving Christian power authorities to act as he likes, just like pawns in his game. One more uh, point, power hierarchies and social divisions are also clearly portrayed in this text, particularly when reference is given to Jewish-Christian relations. As we have seen, the author uh, hints at friendly relations between Jews and Christians, precisely meaning those Christians who are regarded as the best men of the town, namely city authorities and notables. Moreover, Isaac proposes a dynamic image of Jewish-Christian conflict at Pitiliano, resulting in a happy, unprecedented resolution. He talks about a Christian mob rising in defense of the Jewish community. And uh, in this context, it is particularly it's significant to observe the use of the Hebrew terms Yehudim, for Jews, Arelim, for Christians, and Get, divorce, literally, to indicate the ghetto as a separation fence between the two. The use of these three terms uh, in Hebrew, gives a particular attention to the text. Um, as the author, Isaac, uh, wishes to offer the precise record of a moment of uh, overcoming of the Jewish-Christian uh, conflict, as the, of a moment that he considers as a promising uh, sign for the future to come, probably a future that imagine with Yehudim and Arelim, uh, but no more get or ghettos. This can be thus considered as a political memory as it perpetuates 
a selected information suitable for the building of a story about progress, about improvement, a positive story uh, to get recorded and transmitted to future generations. Um, memory had to deliver a positive message. It had to bring a promising message in a particular moment in Jewish history uh, when Italian Jews were going through a process of deliverance from ghettoization, although many resistance from Christian society. And to conclude, I'm a less manifest but uh, nonetheless direct connection has to be made with, um, with Jewish tradition and ritual and with this contemporary establishment of a special community right to commemorate deliverance from persecution. Uh, this is the Purim Sheni service of prayers that local Jewish prayer books refer to as the Seder Umin Ag Bnei Kal Kadash Pitiviano. And the place and time for positive memory um, still remained a ritual place and time. It was the place and time of a rite of deliverance, a Purim Sheni, to be observed and preserved in Jewish local calendar for years long. Thank you.